What's up, you cool cats and kittens out there? Uh, this is Rick, your friendly neighborhood comic book scientist. I want to talk a little bit today about um, a special thing, which is how to press a Mark Jeweler variant comic book. Well, I'll talk about those in the video. I'm assuming most of you know what it is, but I'll go over it briefly. And I have a special bonus thing I want to talk about. And the question is, do you even need to press? Press? Can you like do a? Can you do a cold press? And what's it for? What's the difference between a hot press and a cold press? And, and why would you do it? And for that, we have to talk about planarity. So a book is planar. You want a book to be planar. And there's macro planarity and, and micro planarity. Macro planarity, planarity is the waviness in the in the pages that often aren't taken out by a hot press, or you don't want to leave it in long enough to to take that out because the high temperature can damage the ink. Um, Microplanarity is the little tiny spine ticks and little tiny wrinkles that are taken out by a heat press. That, uh, so they're different. You have different critters. We call it, just like an uh, example of something in chemistry we call chemisorption and physisorption. Just same stuff. It's like the scale or the magnitude of it, right? And I have, um, so what I'm doing is I have these pants. This, I put a sticker on here so you can see it, kind of, and I put these on here anyway. I have cut uh, a couple hundred of these lucite panels that I'm using for uh, cold pressing. And I will show you in a video here in a second what I do with that and why. And you can buy these if you want. They're 12 by 12 by 3 8 inch uh, acrylic. And why are they clear? They're clear so I can tell when they're done. <laughs> so normally you could just put it under anything flat and heavy and just put a brick on it. And it's okay. Ends up that I have found that the amount of weight that you need, you put too much weight, you're actually gonna make, you're gonna put more stress in the book. And you're gonna, it's gonna be harder to get them out. It ends up it's about right if it's about um, about 1.5 grams for every square centimeter of surface area of the comic book, which means it ends up being around around 600 grams, about a pound and a half on a comic book. So I have these uh, panels that I use, and I also have these, which are left over from another experiment of mine. These are uh, nanotech <laughs> nuts. <laughs> these are this is a uh, one and a half inch heavy hex nut, it weighs 1.2 pounds. This in the combination with the mass of the Lucite is a pound and a half and it's ideal for uh, cold pressing. And I'll show you that quickly and then we'll talk about the, the Mark Jeweler stuff. So hang on and I'll switch over to that camera. So this is my typical uh, cold press setup. I don't really have a, a hard back on the book, but I, but I use a, a backing board. Now this book is, gosh, this made me kind of angry because I bought this book and it's, um, it was, I think I paid $50 for it. And it is a, uh, you know, a special Adam Hughes black cat number four. There's one in 25, right? But there's these lines here, these, these roller marks on the book that make me mad. Those are on the edge of being micro or, or you know, they could be micro um, marks and it could be, um, macro, but they're on the edge. And so I'm not quite sure how they're going on that. So I'm going to, I'm going to cold press this guy. And here's, here's all you do. It's really simple to cold press. Cold press is for the big wavies normally, like you get wavy pages and stuff. Oh, incidentally, check this out. This is a really nice, this is really high grade, amazing Spider-Man 116. You know, there's no spine ticks, clean, tight staples, no blunted corners, bright and white. I just bought this for myself. It's a little uh, little present, birthday present for me. I turn 50 on May 1st next month. And so this is just a little treat for me, uh, a little pretty that I want to keep. This is really great. So I was really happy for this one. Uh, it's, it's rare to find one in such perfect condition, but anyway. So back to this. I have a, just this, you know, piece of lucite. Now the trick is you want to keep one side always your downside. Once you scratch it up, you'll have to start putting a piece of paper between the panel and the comic book forever and you don't want to do that. So, um, and you know me, I don't really pick up books by the edges or corners and things. I keep them on these boards while I'm transferring them. So I'm going to put this guy right here and I set that down. It's no harder than that and I put a nut on Felicia Hardy. A nut on Felicia Hardy right here. <laughs> And this is, uh, uh, that's it. And this is a leftover from an experiment of mine. That's why it looks so kind of sparkly. This is a nano laminated uh, metals that keep this thing from rusting forever. So these are, and then just let this sit. I'll let this sit for a couple days and I will come back and maybe they'll be gone. Maybe they won't, but 
that's how you do a cold press. You don't always have to do a hot press. And on modern books with this, especially if it's only a month or less old, a lot of times that ink is still wet. And I am super, super reluctant to press with any kind of temperature uh, brand new books in the last few years because the ink takes a long time to dry and it's not well done. And um, I want uh, Miss Hardy here to come out looking as beautiful as she can with no lines across her thighs and in her uh, breast there. So we want her to look beautiful and we're using this. We're gonna just let it sit for a while and see what happens. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but I'll get back to you and let you know. So what do we have here? We have an Alpha Flight number 39 from 1986. And this book is not exceptional in many ways. If you look at the cover, I'll try to get the glare and you can see some deep indentation here that some people will tell you need to take, you know, a ball bearing or something and press that out to get up. It's not true. Um, there are a lot of little spine ticks here. Most notably, no one cared about this book because you see these little dents on the bottom. These little things usually come from being pulled in and out of comic book boxes without a bag on them. And they kind of, I call them stab marks. They just like from hitting other books. Uh, so they were not even like worth the price of a comic book bag. And it's kind of a fun book. You've got, of course, the Avengers. And most notably, you see the Avengers first and then Alpha Flight next. And the book's kind of fun. It's not terrible. But it really like hits you over the head with Canadianness. I mean, obviously the Vindicator's got a big, she's got a big maple leaf on her all the time. And, um, you know, they, they stop and say in here, I admit certain devices were installed when Alpha's headquarters were remodeled to facilitate electronic surveillance. And because they're being spied on by the, the government. And then they say, um, since Ottawa pays Alpha's bills, they ordered me to keep tabs on you. And since the eavesdropping was non-intrusive, no strings attached, wasn't, uh, wasn't that our deal when we accepted government funding, Gary? And then she like blasts the thing. So it's um, it's exceptionally Canadian, which is fun, and I like it. It's kind of neat, you know, to give things a little different flavor. Not everything happens in New York City, but uh, so it's kind of cool. But what makes this book interesting is that it. Oh, remember the New Universe when that was first happening? Star Brand and Sci Force and uh, uh, that was good stuff. I really enjoyed those books, but. This has, you know, Atlanteans, they're, they're fighting them off for some reason, they, they attack somebody. And this is what makes this book exciting. Oh, first of all, I'll go through some other stuff first. I'll just say that, uh, you know, they meet up with the Avengers and it's just like Captain America just looks so scared right here. It's like, oh my goodness, even we can't, Alpha Flight and Avengers can't stand up to some generic Atlanteans. How are they gonna ever make it? And it's continued in Avengers 272, so, um, I think they were probably struggling because the book was probably not doing great. So when they start seeing, whenever you see, start seeing Spider-Man, Wolverine, and the Avengers show up as guest stars, you know a book is not doing great. So um, this is the trick to this one. So this is a Mark Jeweler variant. Mark Jeweler variants are, the rumor is that they were included in some comic books sold in and around military bases so that the soldiers could buy this jewelry uh, in there. I don't, and maybe Marines and sailors, I have no idea. I don't know if that's true or not. I also don't know, I don't think anybody knows what the ratio is. Uh, what is interesting is that these are very hard to press because there's two. there are two strips of adhesive right here and here on this book. And typically when you press it, if you were just to press it to this page, it would stick to the other page. If you press it to a sheet of Teflon or to some parchment paper impregnated with silicone, then what does it do? It doesn't always stick to it, but it makes it worse. It gets like super gummy. You peel this off and it's tacky. It starts sticking from then on out. You can do it below the melting point or the, the uh, plasticity point, you know, like a hundred degrees, but that's no good for getting out all those little ticks. So you got to get this sticky stuff off of here. So I, I cheat. So I cheat. I take the take sticky stuff off. So it's not on there anymore. I made a solvent here. I call this a Mackie solve. This is just a couple of solvents and two surfactants. And what I do is, and it's like, um, I forget what I put in it. Totally means one of them. And see that, see it coming off? Oh, you probably can't tell, but I can, I can feel it especially. I'm just going to remove the solvent entirely because it's subtractive restoration and subtracting stuff doesn't count as restoration. So I'm taking this off of here and then I'll be able to press it. That's the trick. You kind of cheat um, because, I mean, I don't think anyone's sending this in for a ring. You're not going to want to 
tear this out of the book and mail it in. And when we're done, you can kind of feel it. Oh, there's some, I missed some here. So if you take that off, you will then be able to press this book nicely, where it otherwise would most likely have stuck together. Oh, there's some spots here I missed. You can feel it. There we go. I got it. And then over here, oh, a little bit down there. Oh, a little more. Still didn't get it all. I guess it's drying out. There we go. Now we got it. So now this book will be safe to press. I'm going to look just in case some already transferred over here. Oh, some did actually transfer. I can feel it. There we go. Get some of that off. And then I'm just going to walk into right where that meets this other page. And it looks like at the eye right here at the eye. Okay. Then I'm just going to run. Oh yeah, I can feel it. So it's right here. So there's some on the other side. You can feel it with the swab. I can feel as I'm hitting it. There's the sticky stuff. And it'll come off. There we go. Still a little more actually. Okay, there we got it. So there we go. We got that. Now, when it dries, it won't stick. So we can humidity chamber this or steam it. I will steam it and using one of my chamfered boards. Now, I was going to show you something from earlier. Here, hold on, let me do Dodge Ventures, the Star Wars Republic book had really deep creases here, spine ticks. And just using a chamfered board, which is a board that has been, you know, I soak these in salt water and then I sand them down and I press them individually at an angle so that it doesn't shred. And then just adding that is, it gives it a nice way to take out uh, spine ticks. And so you, this will have a lot, this has a lot of spine ticks and bad stuff in it here, but this book will come out pretty nice. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a quick uh, wet clean. This book deserves no attention at all. <laughs> not, I'm sure it's worth like a dollar if that, but the fact that it's a Mark Jeweler variant makes it fun for me. So I'm going to start toward the spine and work my way away from it. Oh yeah, it's already, I mean, it's wet, so it looks shinier, but all right, cap. And getting it wet like this is, I don't really have to steam it if I got it soaking wet. So I'm going to, well, I should have preheated this book first, but it's not that dirty, so I'm not going to worry about preheating it too much. And I did not get that much dirt off, but if I keep doing this, I bet you I will. I bet you it's dirtier than it looks. Because it's usually in there pretty deep. There we go. There's some purple color coming out. And then I'll flip it here. Go to the other side of this pad. All right, Alpha Flight, let's see what you got for me. What have you got dirt wise? It's funny when you look at books, they don't always look dirty at all. You think, oh, it's not dirty. I won't even bother. But then you pick up so much dirt, and then when you press it, you think it looks so much better. You think, oh, I was seeing dirt all along. I just didn't know it. And it's actually not that dirty. So. Uh, so maybe I'm wrong about that one. So we'll let this dry and we'll press it and then we'll see what our friend Alpha Flight does here. And I'm not even going to put anything in it. I'm just going to make my standard sandwich chamfer board, silicone sheet, like that, chamfer board on the back too. And then um, that's going to be my standard comic book sandwich. And um, I'm just going to do normal. I'm not going to put anything in the middle. Chamfer board back, chamfer board front. I'm going to preheat here the bottom plate. Whoops. Preheat the bottom plate so it gets nice and hot. Again, I have a pretty loose, when I use chamfer board, I don't have a very tight pressure. It's like 60 pounds, I think. Get the bottom nice and toasty, and then we'll see what we do. All right, folks, let's see how we did. Now, I wish we had a control. I should have really just done the bottom or top half of this book to see if the rest of the pages would stick together or to demonstrate to you that they would. But I assure you, they would. There's, it would definitely stick together if you try to press a martial book. And you don't, I don't use these pages in between it because like I mentioned before, it'll, it just gets all gooey. And the next time you shut the book, it like glues together on its own after that. So you really just have to, because this is how I take my books off my, my press. And here we go. Let's take a look here. Okay. Let's see what she looks like. I'm going to take my pages out here. 
my chamfer boards. Now let's take a look. Alright. <clears throat> so that looks better. I mean, yeah, actually it looks quite a bit better. Looking for wrinkles and stuff. I didn't push my chamfer in quite all the way, so that there's a little wrinkle right here. I may have to repress it. But, you know, this book's worth maybe a quarter, so. These, I don't know, they're flatter, but I don't know, they bother me. With the back page, the back cover. You know, all these color breaks and stuff, you know, I'm going to lock this into like a, you know, VF minus maybe. Probably VG plus possibly, but that's that's all we're going to get out of that. Um, let's check and see our little buddy Mark Jeweler, how he's doing here. Uh-oh, it's not really coming apart as I hope I didn't screw it up. Make a embarrassing video. Man, they really like yellow on this book. All right, here we are, Mark Jeweler, 30 years of service, and look at that, comes right apart. So, pretty good. Yeah, it's no problem. So, that's how we save ourselves from Mark Jeweler, is by uh, clean, just cleaning that adhesive off. Now, I probably, I should have, and I would have normally Put a piece of paper in here just to prevent any transfer adhesive because you can see that it did actually transfer it didn't stick the pages together but there's glue over here and you can see the stripe of glue right there so um there's a little i didn't get it all off i'll clean it off i'll just clean it with my my regular vacuum clean and that'll get rid of it but um I, you know, normally I was just doing the test just to see if that helped the stickiness, and it, and it did, but there was still some glue, at least glue transfer, so we don't want that. And, uh, gosh, can you imagine the days when um, you get a 16-inch shoe subscription, so a year and a quarter for nine bucks? <laughs> it's crazy town. And, uh, yeah, we're... Uh, Different, different days for sure. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm getting kind of caught up reading this book. I don't want to bore you guys to death. But uh, anyway, there we go. That's how you do a Mark Jeweler book.